Hello again, everybody. It's Global Wrestling News. Scott Casper, Tony Hager. Let's start with the World Championships and what a week it was in Paris. Last episode, we brought you highlights and interviews from Greco and the women's second place finish. And now it's the men's turn. Starting the men off and making his world team debut, Thomas Gilman. Gilman won four bouts in the morning session, starting with a 5-2 victory over a European silver medalist from Ukraine. In the second round, he shut out his opponent from Iran 3-0, followed that up with a 12-1 tech over Safarov. The next bout had us on the edge of our seats as Gilman snuck out a one-point victory over world military champ Jong of North Korea. Japan's Takahashi was waiting for him in the finals. Gilman pushed the action early, but gave up a push out and a two-point caution for fleeing the mat. Another Takahashi takedown late in the first made it 4-0 at the break. Gilman then continued to press the action in the second and nearly tied the score in a late turn, but Takahashi countered for his third takedown of the bout and took it 6-0. What was the difference in that finals match? It just looked like you couldn't quite get your offense going. Just, I mean, the guy's good. He's a good wrestler. I mean, um, the guy's maybe a little, a little racy, as as we say. Um, you know, I mean, we've talked about it. We've talked about it. We've talked about it. I don't need to score in the first 20 seconds. I'm out there trying to score in the first 20 seconds, which... I don't have a problem with that, but we got to be smarter. Um, I mean, he didn't score on it on any of his attacks, his re-attacks. So just being smarter out there. I mean, I can only wrestle so hard against the best guys in the world. I got to wrestle smart too. So that's what it comes down to. Just maybe, maybe a little breaking period. As as much as I hate to say it, against a, a guy like that, where he's 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 uh, very fundamental in his positioning and and uh, he doesn't really shoot that much. Um, he's not let a guy come to him, but, but, um, in our freestyle preview, you said, Tony, that Gilman had to get a good draw to medal. So was it a good draw, or was Gilman just a lot better than most expected? Well, I'd just say it was a combo of both. You know, Yatsenko, I thought, was a you know, similar style to Gilman. So when I saw that draw first round, I, I thought that was going to be really the one that he had to get over. Sometimes those first those first round matches are always difficult. Jong of North Korea doesn't really have amazing credentials. Um, so I, I'd say, like, after Yatsenko, he didn't have to go through a whole, like, onslaught of guys guys with credentials. Well, so, so, hang on, which is it? Uh, I mean, I would say the World Team Trials was a harder gauntlet to go through than he had the World Championships. To get to the finals anyway, so good guys, but I mean, he he struggled to get through the World Team Trials, so all those guys were really good. World Championships, you know, he wasn't really, I don't know, he wasn't pushed, but um, it was a combo. Of both. Okay. All right, let's switch it to Jaden Cox, the Olympic bronze medalist. He opened the tournament with an easy 6-1 win over German junior world silver medalist Duderoff. Cox fell behind six points early in the second, but scored nine unanswered points to defeat Heino of Finland. Following a 3-2 victory over Poland, Cox found himself down six points again in the semis, but this time he couldn't come back, dropping a 6-3 decision to Makayev. Cox made the bronze medal match to face Bulgaria's Ganev and took an early one-point lead on passivity. Cox picked up the pace in the second, hitting three takedowns and a fourth step out to secure an eight-point shout-out and his second world medal. How do you, how'd you feel about the way you performed today? <laughs> it was kind of a weird day, It was right? awful. Day was awful. You know, I wrestled really bad. Body felt really bad. I was hurting. No excuses, though. I came out and I showed up to the mat. When you show up to the mat, that means you're ready to go. You know, um, and... Uh, some guys, you know, they just outdid me. Um, other times were battles, and I went through them all. And at the end of the day, I just had fun, prospered, and had fun, enjoyed it, and uh, still love doing what I do. So, Tony, lots of talk out there about Cox calling out David Taylor. But it wasn't that way. <laughs> it was actually Taylor calling out Cox. Yeah, it was Cox on social. Or it was Cox that was kind of talking on, on TV, but it was David Taylor that really kind of started on, on Twitter with his Twitter fingers. I mean, um, you know, Jaden Jaden got this spot fair and square. Got the best of three, and I get where David Taylor's coming from. He, he's frustrated, but this was not a this wasn't good timing for him to come do this. We're all cheering on Americans at this point, and I just it's it sucks that we're talking about this over Jaden Cox's incredible run through the World Championship. I mean, I I get it. I get him reacting. I get him reacting because he wants the best for Team USA, and he also wants his opportunity. 
Yeah, this is, um, you know, he wants his opportunity, but he, he should have won the best of three, right? That's, I mean, people are saying they want a rematch. Well, that that's that's not the case. I mean, he Cox won that spot. Cox is going to be waiting for him in the best of three finals. So if David Taylor gets it next time for the World Championships, he's going to have to get he's going to have to get it through there at that point. I mean, controversy or not, at the end of the day, it's who's get the hands raised. And uh, you know, Day could say the same about Burroughs at the World, you know, at the at the U.S. Open. So. At the end of the day, Burroughs has got the spot, Cox has got the spot. All right, our coverage of the World Championships will continue after this timeout. You're watching Global Wrestling News, thanks to our friends at Casey's General Stores. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately $1,000 a month. I made the switch to Yellow Blue LED lighting, and you should too. Welcome back. Our day one world championships recap continues with former NC State big man Nick Wisdowski. Competing in his first senior level championships, Gwiz started off with a bang, outscoring his opponent some 20 to 1, defeating Romanov and Ligeti of Hungary. In a close quarterfinals bout, Gwizdowski edged Iranian Mohibi and moved on to the semis where he dropped a 10 0 tech to Olympic champ Akul of Turkey. Now, in the bronze medal bout, the American scored on a double leg takedown and a shot clock violation to go up three against his Asian silver medalist opponent from Mongolia. Gwizdowski stayed aggressive in the second period, scoring another takedown and a push out to secure his very first world medal, 6 1. What did you learn about yourself as you're going throughout this tournament? Um, kind of like whatever goes through your head before, as soon as you step out there, it's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're thinking about or anything like that. So. That and, and knowing that I can I compete with these guys, I'm better than them, and, and I've wrestled them, some of them before, but it's different when you're in some, some gym in Ukraine or like some some small turn in the middle of Dagestan, but um, being here, Paris at the World Championships, they bring their best, I bring my best, and uh, winning is fun. I think we proved it. We can build them faster, stronger, bigger, more powerful. Gwizdowski is evidence of that. Yep. Yeah, the U.S. has definitely got something going on here. I mean, Delagnev was the guy that was rep representing us for so long. Uh, Gwizdowski is a guy that, you know, he, he can score in bunches. He's willing to pull the trigger. and You know, he, he's not going to go in there and, and hand fight with you a whole lot, and, but he's going to be able to take those open shots. So he, he's really methodical on his shots, and uh, I like him um, for U.S. at this spot. All right, from a big guy to a little guy, defending world champ Logan Steber was the last American to compete on day one. High expectations there, but... Logie ran into Russia's Rashidov, and it got ugly early as Rashidov ran through Steber with an 11-0 tech. He was pulled back into the repechage round. Steber would go on to win his first match, but was eliminated from medal contention in the quarters after falling to Olympic champion Kinkishvili, <laughs> easy for you to say, Kinkishvili <laughs> of Georgia. I mean, I figured it'd be tough. You know, maybe not Russia, Georgia, back-to-back -back tough, but I figured it was going to be you know, someone very good. You completely healthy? Yeah. Yeah, I feel good. I felt great. Preparation was good, but, you know, it's not your day, I guess. What was, uh, you know, most impressive with uh, with Rashidov in that first match? Uh, it was hard to move. I uh, was taking him, uh, taking and trying to move him, and he just was hard. And he was very strong. I mean, I knew he was going to be strong, so, but he was very strong. Brutal draw for Steber. 
yeah, I just this is just uh, you know looking at this right away, I, I was not uh, not pleased with that first round matchup. Probably the worst draw for the Americans uh, over really all all um, styles. And Greco women's this was the toughest one. You know something about his face when you watched him go out in that first match, he just he just wasn't there. It's like his confidence was just like gone. I don't know if he was not feeling very good or what. He wasn't pulling that trigger that we know Logan Steber to do. He's always on the offense. And we just didn't, we just not see that his first match. Well, Steber will be back. That's obvious. The finish he wanted wasn't there. But you know what? Other guys, great guys, have lost as well. All right, three medals through day one with the heavy lifters still on deck. You're watching Global Wrestling News presented by Titan Mercury Wrestling Club of San Marino, California. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies. What's up guys, I wanna tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind, of, um, any kind of wounds that are gonna turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with an amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean, checking them out. Pureandcleansports.com. All right, welcome back to our special World Championships edition right here on GWN. Our freestyle recap continues with the top seed at 70, James Green. In bout one, Green secured an eight-point shutout over Pan Am silver medalist Nestor Tafur. Quick history lesson for you, Tony. Nestor will go down as the last All-American in Boston University history. What do you think of that? And it's always sad, to, you know. You hear about, uh, you know, the thinking about Boston University, all the programs that we've lost. But um, it's proof that once the programs go, your your you know your career's not over. You can keep going, keep persevering, and that's what uh, Teffer's doing. All right, back to the action. Green edged out Georgia Zirabi three two in the quarters, and then took out Japan's two time junior world medalist five three. That in the semis. We go to the gold medal round. Green faced a familiar foe, Olympic bronze medalist Frank Chimizo. The Italian was put on the shot clock midway through the first but hit a takedown at the 23 second mark to go up by two green came out firing in the second but was unable to find an opening and chamizo fired off three more takedowns for the victory you know you always go in with a plan of doing what i'm going to do and then kind of got out of my wheelhouse a little bit and uh you know as he scored the first takedown and just kind of me trying to get back in the match and just kind of got away from me but um you know I've been getting better over the years, and I'm going to keep getting better. And these guys are going to have to be on notice because I'm going to just keep getting better. It's not no ifs, ands, or buts. 
there was a reason why I said Shimizu was the guy to look at for, you know, with Green there. Uh, it's so hard to get a shot off on Shimizu. I mean, Green is a guy that we're known, you know, we, we know that he has the offense. He's got those doubles, but it's so hard to get a shot off on Shimizu. Incredible defense. And, he, and to say he's stronger than Green, is it's crazy to think about, but he definitely is stronger. All right, competing in his very first World Championships, Penn State, Zane Rutherford. He fell in the 65-kilo quarterfinals, an eye-opener for him, I'm sure. The two-time national champ hit three takedowns and a four-point throw in the opener to defeat Edinburgh All-American David Habat. In the quarters, Rutherford squared off against Adam Batarov of Bahrain and surrendered the opening two points on a turn. A second-period takedown by Rutherford tied the score at two, but Batarov reclaimed the lead seconds later on a reversal. Now, a fireman's carry on the edge of the mat made it 5-2 in favor of Batarov, but again, Rutherford came firing back with a takedown of his own to pull within a point. The American hit a go-behind with just seconds left. Knees hit the mat, but it was a little too late, and the match ended 6-4 in favor of Batarov. Great learning experience here, Tony, I gotta believe. Yeah, if you go back and, and watch his matches, he still leaves himself open to a lot of Matt, you know, when you when you think of folk style freestyle, when you're transitioning from getting taken down or in your offense, there's just some transitions that he's going to have to work for, work through and not giving up points when he's getting taken down. That's some things that he's going to have to learn from experience. And experience, we're seeing it in buckets. Kyle Snyder is the guy carrying the buckets. A great study in timing, knowing exactly when to put the hammer down. Yeah, Snyder's one that just gets better as the matches go on. He's able to feel when his opponents are slowing down, when they're about ready to break. Break and you know everyone can watch Kyle Snyder and just mock that. We'll have more medalists, right? <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? All right, stick around. Kyle Snyder, Jordan Burroughs are up next. You're watching Global Wrestling News. Thanks to Adidas Wrestling. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle. The evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. Welcome back to GWN, America's favorite Olympic gold medalist was back on the world stage Friday. Burroughs scored seven unanswered points in the opener to defeat Chabonau of Belarus. In a rematch from the Beat the Streets Gala, Burroughs scored six points in both the first and second period to defeat Japanese world silver medalist Takatani. It was 12-2, by the way. In the quarterfinals, Burroughs hit a big four-point throw, followed by a takedown and a turn to Tech fan favorite Kachiev of France. JB met up with another familiar opponent in the semis, world bronze medalist Bexad Abdurakhmanov of Uzbekistan. Try doing that one. The former Clarion All-American who knocked Burroughs out of the Rio games, if you recall. With the score tied up in the second, Burroughs hit a takedown and then forced a step out to go up by three. Officials hit Burroughs with a caution and a two-point penalty for fleeing, but the match ended 6-5, and the American advanced to the finals to face fellow champion Kitsat Sabalov of Russia. Now, the two traded takedowns in the first. Sabalov hit another takedown for a 4-2 lead, but Burroughs fired back with a takedown of his own, and the first period ended with the score tied at four. Burroughs broke the tie with a second period push out, but another takedown by the Russian made it 6-5 with just a minute left in the bout. Now inside of a minute, JB took Sabalov to the mat to go ahead 7-6 and then hit a late shot at the buzzer to win his fifth world title 9-6. 
it was amazing, dude. Like this moment has been in my mind, I visualized it for such a long period of time. Literally, as soon as I stepped off the mat in Rio, I'm like, man, I remember doing an interview with USA Wrestling. I said, I will be a world champion again at some point in my career. I think it was maybe with you, Rich. And it came a lot sooner than a lot of people expected it to. Uh, for me, it's really about just being in the moment. Manny told me a lot today, he said, be where your feet are, right? Be where your feet are. Don't think about Rio. Don't think about Tokyo. Just think about the opportunity you have in front of you. There are very few people who have won five world championships. Really, I'm just trying to stay ahead of Snyder, right? Like, <laughs> I was trying to catch John, and now I'm just trying not to get passed by Kyle, like, in the process. So it's been a crazy journey, man. We got an amazing team. Uh, Tony, did you notice a difference in, in Burrow's stance? Yeah, and this, uh, you know, you go back to Rito, he was wrestling from his knees a little bit there. I think he did a much better job getting up uh, on his feet, moving his hands a lot. You know, when he gets there, he can control kind of, you know, we, we talk about Kyle Snyder, how he makes people, um, you know, make a mistake, and then he times those shots. That's what Jordan can do when he's in here and, and in the ties, moving his hands a lot, going back on your knees and, and crouching down and making a shot. You know when they're going forward, that your opponent can just time you forward, you know, JB's fast, but he's not that fast. Hmm. Defending Olympic and world gold medalist Kyle Snyder opened the tournament with back-to-back -to -back tech falls over Kazakhstan and Japan. The Buckeyes big man avenged a loss to Azerbaijan in the semis, controlling the action on his way to a 9-2 victory. Now, with the team score all tied up at 53, it all came down, literally, it all came down to what some would think was the most anticipated match of all time, Kyle Snyder versus the Russian Olympic champion Sadolayev. Sadolayev scored the first points on a takedown, but Snyder responded with a step out to to pull within one. Now trailing 3-1, Snyder hit a clutch takedown late in the first to tie the score. The Russian reclaimed the lead on a second period takedown, but Snyder stayed in striking distance with the step out. Now with just 20 seconds left in the second, Snyder scored a spin behind takedown and held on for the dramatic 6-5 victory. First thing that needed to happen was us get on opposite sides. That happened. I thought we'd both make it to the finals. I know we were both planning on it. And he gave me a very good match. Just, I mean, it couldn't have been a more uh, hyped up situation. Team title on the line, literally. If you would have won, they, they would have won the team title. If I, if I won, we got the team title since 1995, the year I was born. So this is an amazing day. What are you most proud of? My effort. Most proud of my effort, most proud of my emotional control. I was tired too, but I moved my hands really well, and I started my sprint early. I've seen guys this tournament starting their sprint with 20 seconds left. That's not enough time. I started with a minute left, was able to get a push out. I felt him get tired, taking his time back into the center, and then uh, was able to get that go behind, but uh, that was pretty sweet. Well, Tony, we talked about it earlier. It all comes down to this timing. Well, timing and just having that clutch gene, and that is what Kyle Snyder is. You, you saw him at the NCAA Finals. He pulled the trigger. Olympic, he, Olympics, the World Cup. He he knows when to come through in the clutch. You know, he might not connect on all his shots that he does, but he's always going forward. He's always pushing the pace. He, like I said, he might always not always get those those singles, but when he does, he gets them and he gets the points when they count. Let's talk to the head coach for USA Wrestling, Bill Zadig. He had six medals, 54 points, and the U.S. left France with its first world team title in 22 years. Here's Bill. It's such a unique experience. You know, the first time we've won a title since uh, 1995 as a team. Um, first time, to my knowledge, that we've won it, not on our own soil or our own continent. And so uh, those are all um, challenges, I guess, that, that can be, and so uh, it's, uh, it's, it's awesome, it's great, it's amazing. And then you have, uh, you know, the performances, the individual performances, right? It doesn't happen with everybody uh, from top to bottom, but of course our team leaders, uh, Jordan, Kyle, that, that win, in it, I mean, it's, it, it's fairy tale. You're wrestling the Russian in the finals with the team title on the line, and it's world champion versus world champion, and just epic battles, back and forth, back and forth. And one guy scores, and the other guy raises the bar, and then the first guy scores again and raises the bar, and it just kept climbing until, you know, and, and you know, glory to God that our guys came out on top. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's pretty awesome.
besides the obvious of winning, Bill, 25, 25 years down the road, what will you remember about this group? Uh, the relationships, the individuals. I mean, I love these guys. I love every one of them. And, uh, you know, the accolades are great. They're great. And, and uh, I, I think it's uh, disrespectful to not enjoy the moment. But at the same time, uh, you know, you want to keep an even keel about it and, and, uh, and, and understand that, you know, whether we win or we lost, we're still, this team, these guys are great people and, and, uh, and they're just, that, that's the most valuable to me, it always will be. Um, but, it, but it's great when you can have that kind of relationship and that kind of camaraderie and, and, and share a challenging endeavor and also have achievement at a high level. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Tony, was it everything you hoped for? Oh, when, when Dan Gable comes out and says this team can bring home a medal, you got to listen, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, it doesn't get any better than a, an American beating a Russian in the finals, an America beating Russia for a world title. This is Rocky all over again. I, I loved every bit about every bit about it. I let's watch it all again and again and again. Well, make sure you tune into this weekend's Takedown Radio. We're going to be talking with some of the coaches, some of the athletes as well. That'll do it for us from Des Moines, Iowa. Thanks for joining us. Special edition of Global Wrestling News comes to an end right now. We'll talk to you next week.